Do you know that little voice inside your head, the one that's kind of narrating your day, helping you make decisions, or maybe even rehearsing a conversation? Yeah, we all have one. But what happens when that inner voice starts to feel, well, not so inner? Today, we're going to dive deep into one of the most fascinating and frankly misunderstood experiences of the human mind, the science of hearing voices. Okay, let's start with this quote right here, because it's basically the whole puzzle we're trying to solve today. It suggests that maybe, just maybe, hearing a voice isn't a mistake. It's not a deficit, but it's something else. A kind of supercharged thought. An experience so intense, it actually crosses the line from just being in your head into something your senses perceive as real. So let's see if the science actually backs that up. All right, so first things first, we need to get properly acquainted with that voice we all know so well, our inner speech. Because honestly, it's the foundation for understanding everything else that's about to follow. So inner speech is the fancy scientific term for, you know, talking to yourself in your head. And it's not just some random chatter either. It's this fundamental tool our brains use. It's how we work through problems, how we regulate our emotions. It's even tied to our very sense of who we are. It's basically the constant silent narrator of our lives. But here's where it gets really, really interesting. What happens when that familiar inner voice, the one that's always been yours, suddenly loses that feeling of minus. It's like a case of mistaken identity that's happening right inside your own mind. This is the central puzzle scientists are trying to solve. And this table here breaks down the leading theory perfectly. You see, with typical inner speech, we feel like we're the ones creating it, we're in control, and it totally belongs to us. But in voice hearing experiences, all of that flips. The voice feels like it's coming from the outside, it feels intrusive, and that essential sense of me is just gone. The classic idea here is that this is a misattribution. Your brain is taking your own inner speech and mistaking it for someone else's voice. Okay, so for your brain to make that kind of mistake, something has to be going on, right? Some kind of process has to break down. And scientists think they have found a major biological clue, a mechanism in the brain that's supposed to act like a little self-tag for all our thoughts. This thing is called corollary discharge. And honestly, the easiest way to think about it is like a read receipt for your own brain. When your brain is about to generate a thought or a word, it sends out this little signal that says, hey, just a heads up, I'm about to do this, so don't be surprised. It tells your sensory systems to kind of turn down the volume because the source is you. It's the exact same reason you can't tickle yourself. Your brain knows it's coming and cancels out the sensation. And boom, this chart shows you exactly what a 2024 study found. Researchers could actually measure the strength of this self-tag signal. And look, in the healthy controls, the signal is pretty strong. But then you look at patients who experience auditory verbal hallucinations, and whoa, that signal was significantly weaker. The brain's little self-tag was just a whole lot fainter. So, what's the big deal? Well, think about it. If that from me signal is weak, or maybe it doesn't even show up, what happens? An internal thought, one of your own, shows up in the auditory parts of your brain without that tag. And your brain, having no idea that you made it, might just process it like any other sound from the outside world, as a voice. But hang on, a weak brain signal? That can't be the whole story, right? There's got to be more to it. And it turns out, there is. Recent research has added this fascinating psychological piece to the puzzle that kind of changes the whole picture. And that piece is a personality trait called absorption. And I bet you've experienced this. You know when you get so lost in a good book or a movie or a piece of music that you completely lose track of time and your surroundings just fade away? That's absorption. It's this incredible capacity for intense, immersive, imaginative engagement. Okay, now get this. Look at these findings from a landmark 2025 study. They wanted to know what best predicts these experiences in the general population. Now, as you'd expect, the qualities of a person's inner speech, that was a strong predictor. No surprise there. But look at the second line. A person's capacity for absorption was almost just as powerful. That is a huge clue. A tendency to get totally lost in your own inner world is deeply connected to hearing voices. And here's why that matters so much. Absorption isn't about a deficit or a problem. It's a trait that can make your inner world, your thoughts, your daydreams, your memories, feel incredibly vivid and real. It's like turning up the saturation and the volume on your mental life, making it feel just as living color as the world outside. So let's take a breath and put this all together. We've got two huge clues now. 
a potential biological mechanism, that weak self-tag, and this powerful psychological trait, the capacity for absorption. So let's see what happens when we combine them. But first, I have to show you this number because it is absolutely wild. That same 2025 study found that 79%, nearly 8 out of 10 people in the general U.S. population reported having at least one voice hearing experience. 79%. This completely reframes the conversation, doesn't it? It suggests this isn't some rare symptom, but actually something on a whole spectrum of common human experience. So here's how the new, more complete model seems to work. It all starts with a person having this capacity for absorption, that ability to have a really rich, immersive inner world. This trait can then amplify their inner speech, making thoughts feel way more intense and real than usual. Now, what if that same person also has a weaker collateral discharge, that fainter self-tag? Well, you've got the perfect storm. The brain produces this unusually vivid thought, but at the same time, it fails to label it as its own. And the result? That vivid, unmarked thought is experienced as sensory, as an external voice. And just like that, we're right back where we started with our opening quote. But now it's not just a poetic idea, is it? It's a hypothesis that's actually grounded in emerging science. We've just walked through a whole new way of thinking about this, shifting the focus away from it just being a mistake or a deficit and seeing it as this complex, fascinating interaction between a person's unique psychology and their brain's biology, creating a uniquely vivid human experience. Which kind of leaves us with this one final mind-blowing question to chew on. The line between our inner world and the outer world, it might be a lot blurrier than we think. If our own minds have the power to generate experiences that are totally indistinguishable from reality, what does that really tell us about the nature of perception and reality itself? Definitely something to think about.